Let's talk more about Allah's Rahmah. Ready? Just a few minutes. Now, before you even came to this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written that His mercy overcame His anger. May Allah shower His mercy upon whoever just answered. Say, I mean. So Allah has written, my mercy overcomes my anger. That's before I even existed and all of you here. So we didn't even begin yet. And Allah says, my mercy overcame my anger. When Allah created Adam السلام, and he was just the body, there's no ruh, there's no soul in Adam. When Allah blew the soul into Adam and the soul reached the head, what happened to Adam? He excellent, he came to life and the first thing he did was sneeze. And this is the first human being ever created, correct? When he sneezed, what was the first thing a human being ever said to Allah? Alhamdulillah. The first thing, now here's the word, halal drum roll, whatever you want to do. The first thing the Creator ever said to a living being, ever, was what? Yarhamuk Allah. If this was the beginning, then what in the world is next? Miskin, the brother in front of you, this miskin right here. I went to a very high-end dinner. There were three forks, three knives, three spoons. When they were serving the salad, which has strawberries, I don't know how that works, but it has strawberry. And when it was done, the waiter came and grabbed the plate. I had my fork on it. So when I was done with the salad, I said, oh, hold on, let me just grab the fork for the next dish. He's like, sir, you have two other forks. <laughs> Every dish has its own fork. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So I'm like, if this is the appetizer, then what's next? Right? If this is just the beginning, then what's next? Lobster, sushi, whatever it may be. Allah is the best of examples. If the first thing He told Adam, Yarhamuk Allah, that one in the world is next. Rahma upon Rahma. Let's go all the way to the end of time. Rasulullah said that Allah has how many parts to His Rahma? How many parts? Allah has 99. Descended one of them to this dunya. Any mercy that you see. The mercy I have towards you that I will not go over my time, inshallah. And the mercy that you have towards the other person who came to sit next to you and you moved your jacket and your purse. You see the rahmah that you have to that other person that just sat next to you? The rahmah that someone may have, whatever the case may be in the cafeteria, you give him some ketchup, whatever the case may be. This entire rahmah over the entire globe, which includes animals, is from that one rahmah Allah descended. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Yawm al Qiyamah, Allah joins that one Rahmah with the 99 that Allah kept in Akhirah. Allahu Akbar. How can you give up? How can you give up on Allah? Then Yawm al Qiyamah, then Rasulullah Sallallahu then Allah combines it and He showers His mercy. And in a hadith that is gharib, Ibn Kathir states that Iblis, the devil, who Allah said, You are cursed, and Allah promised you're going to hellfire. He sees Allah's mercy so much, he overlooks your mistakes, he overlooks how bad, messed up stuff you've done, takes you to Jannah, didn't go to hellfire. He's like, you know what, I might have some rahmah. Iblis himself has some hope in Allah. Then how in the world someone who says, La ilaha illallah, give up on Allah? How is that possible? If Iblis rejected Allah and he still had hope. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon all of us. I will end with this action item. Everyone here, inshallah, I don't know how much Quran you read, but you have to promise that you will not allow a single day in your life to pass by without you reading one page of Quran. You should not accept a day in your life to pass by without one page. Look, oh brother, this is bid'ah. Why you say one page? Relax. Make it half whatever it may be, but don't let a day pass by without you reading some Quran. Don't. Put a reminder, whatever the case may be. Because Allah said, so A'udhu Billahi Minash Ar-Rajim, Bismillah, Rahman, Ar-Rahim, in an ayah that perhaps many of you have heard before. Allah says in the Quran, 
وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Qur'an is recited, pay attention. For when you recite the Qur'an and you're focused towards it, guess what happens? Allah showers His rahmah upon you. So may Allah allow us to be connected to the Qur'an. Say, Ameen. And I advise you, please, you might say, well, what this convention changed in me and so on. There's a lot of great speeches that you've heard. You need to follow up with some action items. The least you can take out of this 15-minute talk that you heard, that I will not allow a single day to pass by without reading some Qur'an. Put a reminder on your phone. I have two reminders, one at 8.50 a.m. and one at 9.30 p.m. What's the wisdom? That's something that I know about. But the point being is that something that customizes to your life for you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive me for my shortcomings because I should read way more than one page a day. And may Allah forgive us all for our shortcomings and shower His mercy upon all of you. Jazakumullahu khayran. And as Allah promised, the moment a session like this is done, Allah says, all of your sins are forgiven. This is an authentic narration. The Prophet says, stand up, all your sins are forgiven. So may Allah allow this hadith to be applied to us. Amin Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.